Imagine yourself standing atop a rugged cliff, the Atlantic breeze ruffling your hair as you gaze out over an ocean so blue it seems to merge with the sky at the horizon. Now, picture being able to step from this serene scene into a world of vibrant culture, heart-pounding surf and hidden historical treasures, all within the span of a few sandy steps. Welcome to St. Joseph Barbados, a place where every corner holds a story and every wave whispers secrets of the deep. St. Joseph boasts some of the best surf spots on the planet and the soup bowl is the crown jewel. Legends of the surfing world wax lyrical about its perfectly sculpted barrels and challenging breaks. Imagine surfing waves that seem crafted by Poseidon himself. I remember my first attempt to conquer these waves. Picture a novice, bored in tow, confidence high until the first wave knocked me back to shore like a stray beach ball. The local surfers just chuckled, hoisting me up and pushing me back into the fray. Shouting encouragements, it's not just about riding waves here, it's about embracing the spills with a laugh. Surfing in St. Joseph isn't just a sport, it's a community event, a shared struggle against the might of nature. Each wipeout is met with cheers, each successful ride celebrated like a personal victory for all. Here, you're not just facing waves, you're riding the very pulse of Barbados. Nestled in the heart of St. Joseph is the Andromeda Botanic Gardens, a lush paradise that seems to sprawl endlessly. It's easy to lose hours wandering among rare orchids and towering palms, each turn revealing a new splash of color or a hidden bench perfect for contemplation. The gardens are home to some of the island's rarest plants. I was particularly fascinated by a flower known only as the Midnight Bloom, which, as the name suggests, unfurls its petals only under the cover of darkness. The gardeners will eagerly share tales of visitors who camp out just to witness this nocturnal spectacle. It's a place of peace where the only sounds are the rustling of leaves and the distant crash of ocean waves. As I sat on a wooden bench, a hummingbird zipped by, pausing just long enough to investigate my presence. It's moments like these, simple yet profound, that encapsulate the tranquil spirit of St. Joseph. History in St. Joseph is not confined to books, it's etched into the very landscape. The remnants of old sugar plantations sprawl across the parish, their weathered structures standing as silent witnesses to a bygone era. Pico Tenerife, an old plantation house, offers a particularly poignant glimpse into the island's colonial past. As I walked through the ruins, the guide recounted tales of the plantation's heyday, when sugar was king and Barbados was a jewel in the colonial crown. Despite the beauty of the ruins, there's a somber undertone a reminder of the harsh realities of those times. The impact of this history is still felt today. Locals are quick to point out how it shaped their community and culture, fostering a resilience that defines the Barbadian spirit. This blend of pride and historical awareness makes St. Joseph not just a place to relax, but to reflect and learn. No visit to St. Joseph is complete without indulging in the local cuisine. The flavours here are as bold and complex as the island's history. At a small, unassuming eatery called Lucy's, I had the pleasure of tasting flying fish, a Barbadian staple, seasoned to perfection with just the right amount of spice. Then came the incident with the Scotch bonnet pepper. Unassuming in size but explosive in flavour, this pepper is not to be underestimated. I learned the hard way when I boldly declared I could handle my spice, only to be humbled by a single bite that left me gasping for air, much to the amusement of the locals. Between mouthfuls of water and laughter, I was offered a local remedy, a bit of bread and some milk. It was a hilarious lesson in culinary humility, but more importantly, it was a reminder of the warmth and camaraderie that defines Barbadian dining. Here, every meal is a mix of flavors and laughter, a true feast for the senses. The artistic pulse of St. Joseph beats loudly, fueled by the stunning landscapes and vibrant culture. 
I visited the studio of a renowned local painter whose canvases exploded with colour, each brushstroke capturing the essence of the island. One painting in particular caught my eye, titled The Dance. It depicted a local festival, the figures almost leaping off the canvas in a blur of colour and motion. The artist shared that it was inspired by the Kadoomant Day, a festival that symbolises the end of sugarcane harvest. The stories behind each piece offered a deeper understanding of Barbadian life, its struggles, celebrations and daily rhythms. Art here is not just seen, it's experienced, a window into the soul of the island. Community is the backbone of St Joseph. I attended a local fish fry, a weekly event where everyone from toddlers to the elderly gathers to enjoy good food and even better company. Music blared from makeshift speakers, a mix of calypso and reggae that compelled even the most reluctant to dance. It was not just a party, it was a celebration of community. Everyone was family here. I was pulled into a dance by a sprightly elderly lady who outpaced me easily. Her laughter, bright and infectious, was a testament to the spirited life of St. Joseph. This is a place where community ties are strong, where every event is an opportunity to celebrate life together. It's infectious and you can't help but feel a part of it, swept up in the warmth and joy of this Barbadian treasure. For those who tread off the beaten path, St. Joseph offers a plethora of nature trails and reserves that showcase the island's rugged beauty. I took to the paths early one morning, the dew still fresh on the leaves, the air crisp and filled with the scent of the ocean. The trails wind through dense forests and open onto spectacular vistas. At one lookout, I paused, overwhelmed by a sweeping view of the coastline, the cliffs standing guard over the azure waters. It's a reminder of nature's majesty and power. Along the way, I encountered a troop of green monkeys, playful and mischievous. Watching them scamper through the trees, completely at home in this tropical paradise, was a delightful encounter that underscored the harmony between the island's wildlife and its environment. This closeness to nature, this unspoiled charm, is part of what makes St. Joseph so special. It's not just a place to see, it's a place to connect, to really feel the pulse of the natural world. The night in St. Joseph reveals a different kind of beauty. The stars seem brighter here, unobscured by the lights of larger cities. I spent an evening at a beach bonfire, the flames dancing to the rhythm of the waves, the sky a canvas of twinkling lights. The laughter and stories flowed as freely as the rum and I found myself enveloped in tales of the sea, ghosts and treasure. It was here that I learned about the night swimmer, a local legend of a mysterious figure seen swimming along the coast, only visible by moonlight. The night ended with a shared meal, everyone contributing something, a true potluck under the stars. It was a perfect blend of simplicity and magic, a night that distilled the essence of island life into unforgettable memories. In St. Joseph, the night doesn't just whisper, it sings, and its song is one of endless stars and endless stories. Every place has its secrets and St. Joseph is no exception. One of my most thrilling discoveries was a hidden beach, known only to locals and accessible only through a narrow winding path lined with wildflowers. Stepping onto the secluded sand was like discovering treasure. The beach was pristine, untouched, the water crystal clear and inviting. Spending an afternoon here was like being in another world, one far removed from the bustle of tourist spots. The thrill of finding such a place, the sense of adventure and discovery, adds an extra layer of excitement to the travel experience. In St. Joseph, these secret spots are tokens of the island's generous spirit, shared with those who seek them. Sustainability isn't just a buzzword in St. Joseph, it's a way of life. I visited a community-led environmental project where locals are actively involved in preserving their natural heritage. From coral reef restoration to beach cleanups, the commitment to eco-friendly practices is impressive. I participated in a tree planting event, a hands-on experience that highlighted the community's proactive approach to conservation. The project leader shared how these efforts not only enhance the environment but also bolster the community 
by creating shared goals and responsibilities. It's heartening to see a community so invested in its future, ensuring that the beauty of St. Joseph can be enjoyed for generations to come. This dedication to sustainability is a testament to the island's respect for nature and a crucial part of its charm. The spiritual landscape of St. Joseph is as diverse as its natural one. I visited several spiritual sites from age-old churches to small roadside shrines, each reflecting the deep faith of the community. At a small chapel, I witnessed a baptism, a joyous occasion marked by song and celebration. The congregation welcomed me with open arms, sharing their traditions and their faith with warmth and openness. This openness to sharing spiritual experiences speaks volumes about the inclusivity and warmth of the Barbadian people. It's a place where faith is lived and celebrated openly, adding another layer to the rich tapestry of life in St. Joseph. Festivals in St. Joseph are a spectacle of color, sound and energy. I had the pleasure of participating in the Harvest Festival a vibrant celebration of the island's agricultural bounty. The streets were lined with stalls selling everything from handmade crafts to exotic fruits. The highlight was the parade, a riot of colour with dancers in elaborate costumes moving to the beat of steel drums. I even got roped into trying my hand at the drums, an experience that ended in laughter and applause for my clumsy but spirited attempt. Festivals here are not just fun, they're a vital part of the community fabric, weaving together generations and stories in a lively display of Barbadian culture. Life by the sea in St. Joseph is rhythmic, dictated by the tides and the catch of the day. I spent a day with a local fisherman, learning the ropes and listening to his tales of the sea. Stories of giant catches, storms and the serene beauty of a dawn on the water. This connection to the sea is intrinsic to life here. It shapes the daily routines, the diet and even the folklore of the community. The fisherman's respect for the ocean was palpable, a reminder of the deep bond between the islanders and their surrounding waters. Walking along the beach at sunset, watching the boats bob gently on the waves, I felt a profound sense of peace. Here by the sea, life's complexities seem to drift away, leaving only the simple joy of existence. As my journey in St. Joseph comes to a close, I find myself reflecting on the myriad experiences that have filled my days here. From the adrenaline of surfing big waves to the tranquility of a hidden garden, each moment has been a piece of a larger, vibrant puzzle. St. Joseph, with its stunning landscapes, rich history and spirited community, has been more than just a destination. It's been a revelation. The laughter, the music, the sheer joy of life here, it's infectious, it's invigorating. It's hard to say goodbye to such a place, but the beauty of travel is that the end of one journey is just the beginning of another. St. Joseph will remain with me, a bright gem in my treasure chest of travels, its songs and stories, echoes that will inspire adventures yet to come. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more interesting videos.